Recently, someone asked me a great question. They asked, what is your best pair of shoes if you could only have one pair for walking, running, and everyday wear for the rest of your life? And I've been thinking about this question ever since. What if I did only have one pair of shoes? What would I want from that pair of shoes? There can be only one. My top five shoes if you could only have one pair. Yes, of course I'm aware of the inherent contradiction within the title of this video. 60% of the time, it works every time. But I feel it's important to present more than one option because the real goal is to find shoes that are good at doing all the things. And besides, let's face it, lists are fun. Now, before we move on, we have to talk about something important. I recognize that some of y'all might actually get down like this and rock out with just one pair of shoes. And if we're talking about a pair that you wear with any regularity, like perhaps as much as every day, then I strongly, strongly recommend that you get yourself a second pair of shoes. Now, this isn't me being bougie or fancy or just trying to spend your money or nothing like that. I'm talking about straight grooming and maintenance for the health of your feet and the health of the shoes. The reality is everyone's feet sweat and your foot as well as your shoes are gonna be best served if that shoe is given proper time to air out. It's gonna minimize odor and reduce the risk of other foot ailments potentially caused by moisture. Also, it's gonna give the foam time to recover, thus increasing the lifespan of the shoes. Look, I know these shoes out here, they're not cheap, but if we're talking about a pair that you wear on a regular basis, please do me a favor, get a second pair, rotate them. All right, deal? All right, deal. Capisci, paisano. Capisci. Now, let's talk about if we were only going to have one pair of shoes and what would we expect from that pair? Well, for me, first and foremost on the list is always comfort. Also for me, comfort is divided into four categories. And number one, they have to be good for casual wear. Number two, they have to be good for walking. Number three, they have to be good for long days on your feet. And number four, of course, they have to be good for running. Now, usually I'm all about comfort and functionality and could really give a shit about how a shoe looks. But considering this is going to be our only pair, I think it would be naive not to take looks into consideration. Also, speaking of looks, I want a shoe that provides lots of cushion and comfort, but does this in a normal to medium sized stack height. I mean, I don't want some giant shoe sole and the shoes that look like clown shoes. So you already know there probably isn't any Hoka's on the list. So yeah, you Hoka fans, you can probably just go ahead and click off now. But I mean, I would really appreciate it if you hung around and kept rocking with me, because really I do rock with the Hoka's because I already said, I don't care how the shoe looks. Anyway, let's get to number five. This shoe I feel is the best for running on the list. It also has the thickest stack out of any of the shoes that we're gonna talk about today. As a result, I also feel it's the softest of the group. I'm talking about the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V4. This shoe is great for running and walking and pretty decent for casual wear too. I admit the shoe does look a little new age, but it's still tame enough to wear in a lot of circumstances. Now, the shoe does have a rather pronounced rocker, which I really don't love for casual wear. And as a result, that's why this New Balance model falls right here in the number five spot. In the number four spot, we have the shoe that wins for me in the lifestyle category. And I gotta admit, I really love these shoes and that's something you won't hear me say too often about any product on this channel. It's the Adidas Boost Foam Shoe Sole and its flexibility that's the winner here for me. And when you combine that with the flexible sock-like upper, you have a shoe that allows for a lot of freedom of movement for the foot and the option that I turn to most often to just chill. I'm talking about the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0. The Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0 provides a good amount of cushion for a shoe stack that, let's face it, isn't really that thick. 
and I really love that. Now, I feel that the 1.0s are just okay for running and walking, but lifestyle is where they really shine. And as far as looks go, I'd say classic. But as a result of them having what I deem as limited athletic usage, the Ultra Boost 1.0 fall right here into the number four spot. For number three, we have what I believe is, as far as appearance is concerned, the most polarizing looking shoe on our list. Here, I like the rounded toe box, as well as the minimum heel to toe drop. And as a result, I feel that these shoes are some of the best for athletic pursuits other than running. Now, I understand that running shoes are for running, but for many of us, our running shoes can creep into other activities. And I feel that this is going to be the best pair for those other activities. I feel like the On Cloud Runner 2s are one of the most overlooked and best utility models that On has to offer. The Cloud Tech design delivers a lot of cushion, and as far as looks go, they look okay for what they are. But let's be real, the Cloud Tech design is so unique looking and also polarizing that people either really love or hate the way that Ons look, and as a result, this model in spite of it being some of my favorite, can only climb as high as number three on our list. Right here, I have to slide in an honorable mention. Seeing as though every shoe on this list seems to cost $140 or more, I think it's important to have an option that costs less than 100 bucks. And I feel like the Brooks Trace line of sneakers is a great lightweight and value option that has a good amount of cushion for the price. I also feel that the Brooks Trace, they look okay, and they're gonna be a great place to stop for someone that just isn't that picky or someone that's looking for the best value option. However, I do feel they are inferior to our number two selection, which once again features a flexible shoe sole and a sock-like upper, but this time it's the Brooks DNA EVA material for the shoe sole. I really have to thank you guys out there for turning me on to the Brooks Glycerin 21. And hey, Travis Mays 23, man, I heard you, or at least rather I saw you or saw all of the comments, plural. But hey, man, you were right. The Brooks Glycerin are my favorite model of Brooks sneakers. And we're talking about one of the best medium stack, well cushioned shoes out there. Now, just to be clear, I have the Stealth Fit version, which is what accounts for the sock-like upper and the more flexible shoe sole. However, if you like a more traditional type of upper, there's just the regular Brooks Glycerin 21, which is still an awesome shoe. However, for this list, I'm going with the Stealth Fit version. I think that the Brooks Glycerin have a minimal toe-to-heel drop, which makes them great for everyday wear. I also feel like the Brooks Glycerin do everything well. They're good for running, they're good for walking, they're good for standing around or whatever. My one hesitation with the Brooks Glycerin is they do have a bit of a rocker, which I feel provides for not the best lateral stability, but hey, it's a running shoe. However, if it's my only pair of shoes, then lateral stability does matter a bit. And as a result, the Brooks Glycerin land right here in the number two spot. Before we get on with our number one selection, just a reminder, we're not talking about just our favorite pair of shoes, but we're talking about what is our best pair if we were gonna only have one pair of shoes to do all of the things. So we're talking about a shoe where you could get your workout in in the morning and then go for a nice walk in the afternoon and then turn around and go to dinner while all wearing the same pair of shoes. So as much as I try, I haven't tried every single pair of shoes out there. So let me know if your favorite pair of shoes are on the list or if you could only have one pair of shoes, what would it be and why? Please let me know in the comments down below. And let's get on with my number one pick. And once again, we have a shoe that has great flexibility and great cushion in a reasonable stack height. We have a beautifully pliable upper and even more of that Adidas boost foam in a shoe sole for the win. Yes, I'm talking about the Adidas Ultra Boost 5. 
or maybe it's called Adidas Ultra Boost 5X. I'm not really sure. You let me know. Now, although the Adidas Ultra Boost 5X has lost some of that pliability that I love so much from the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0, I still feel that the Adidas Ultra Boost 5 are gonna be way more flexible than most shoes on the market, while delivering more of that Adidas Ultra Boost cushion for active pursuits. Yes, I feel that the Adidas Ultra Boost 5 are better for running and being active than the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0, but I still feel that the Adidas Ultra Boost 5 really shine in the lifestyle space. And even though I feel that the Adidas Ultra Boost 5 has a bit of a heel to toe drop that I don't really love that so much for casual wear, but it's not so much that it's a deal breaker. And as far as looks go, I feel like they look pretty cool and are gonna work in a whole lot of circumstances. So ladies and gentlemen, if I only had one shoe to do everything with, yes, I'm rocking with the Adidas Ultra Boost 5X. So, hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for rocking out with me to this point. And remember, I'm not out here trying to spend your money, just trying to let you know what's what. And until the next one, fitness and beer. Get, get out of here.